Before this video starts, please note that everything said in this video could change in the future, as this is a live service game and patches made after this video's release date could alter or revert changes and features. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all enjoy the video. Hi everyone! Fishing is an activity that pretty much everyone in Pokemon Planet is exposed to. New players sometimes get confused with the different aspects of fishing, so I'm here to explain the fishing mechanics in a more digestible way. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of fishing, the different rod types, the different areas that you can unlock through fishing, and some general fishing and experience tips. And after the release date of the Legendary Guide, I need some time off after editing such a long video. So why don't we kick back, relax, put on our Bass Pro Shop hats, and do some fishing. Oh boy, do I love fishing! Now let's first ask the question, why fishing? Because here on this channel, we're philosophers. The short answer to that question is exclusive Pokemon and special items. The long answer is that it gives you access to exclusive Pokemon, special items, and lets you have an easier time grinding in certain areas. And I mean, come on, there's nothing like a bit of fishing. Here's a list of some Pokemon that you're able to find almost exclusively through fishing. Some of these can be found through other methods like surfing later in the game, however, are most commonly accessible through fishing. This isn't all of them, but it's a sizable chunk. Getting started is as simple as going to this house here in Vermilion City and picking up the old rod for 5,000. Once you have your fishing rod, go to any body of water and press F. The game will automatically use your fishing rod for you. By the way, if you have multiple types of fishing rods in your inventory, the one that is used when you press F will be the one that's first in your inventory. So make sure to order your fishing rods so that you're using the correct one. You'll know when the fishing sequence has started when this little message pops up in chat. Moving or pressing F again will make you stop fishing. So you've pressed F and now you just... wait... And then a minigame should pop up after a few seconds. This minigame adds a little bit more interactivity with the player and rewards good timing with extra experience. Essentially, your goal is to just hit the space bar while the hook is either over the yellow or the green bar to start an encounter with a random wild Pokemon. Stopping the hook over nothing will make you lose your encounter and will make you press F again to start the fishing process over. Stopping it over the yellow will give you a bit of fishing experience and will give you an encounter with a wild Pokemon. Stopping the hook over the green will not only boost your fishing experience, by 1.5, but will also boost the experience your Pokemon gain from that encounter by 1.5. This is called a perfect hook. I highly recommend always trying to perfect hook as it gives you more experience. Once you hook something, a Pokemon encounter will start like normal. You can kill it, catch it, or run, and then it'll start the process all over again. Next, let's talk about fishing rods. First, I'd like to bust a pretty common myth among new players. Better fishing rods do not give you higher chances for Pokemon, rarer Pokemon, or more experience. What better fishing rods actually do is they increase your hook rate and slightly boost your encounter speed. Each rod upgrade gives you an extra 10% chance to hook an encounter, with the exception of one specific rod that we'll get into in just a moment. So for example, the Super Rod will have a better and faster chance of hooking a wild Pokemon than the old rod. There's a formula that you can plug your fishing level into to get the exact milliseconds of your encounter speed if you're curious. By the way, small tangent, since we're talking about hook rates, the ability suction cups and sticky hold both increase your hook rate. If you want to get fishing encounters at an increased rate, I definitely recommend having a Pokemon with one of these abilities at the front of your party. I wouldn't recommend using these abilities in higher level areas like the Battle Zone and Ancient Dungeon though. Now onto the actual fishing rods themselves. There are a total of six different fishing rods in the game. First, there's the old rod. This is your starting fishing rod and is the one you buy from the fishing guru in Vermilion City like I showed you. The old rod has a hook rate of 50% and is the slowest rod available. Next, there's the good rod. You need to be fishing level 5 to use this rod and it can be bought at this house in Fuchsia City for 12,000. The good rod has a hook rate of 60%. The super rod can be used once you hit fishing level 20 and can be bought at this house on Route 12 for 35,000. The super rod has a hook rate of 70%. The steel rod can be used once you hit fishing level 50. This rod you have to craft by yourself by combining a super rod, a steel wire, 
and a Metal Coat. Steel Wire can be dropped from any Steel-type Pokémon, and Metal Coats can drop from Scyther and Onix. The Steel Rod has a hook rate of 80%. The Master Rod can be used once you hit Fishing Level 100. This rod is also supposed to be crafted by combining a Steel Rod with a Master Ball. The Master Rod has a hook rate of 100% and is the fastest rod available. And lastly, the AFK Rod, which is a bit of a weird one. It can be used once you hit Fishing Level 50 and can be bought from the Elite Shop for 50 Elite Tokens. Essentially, what the AFK Rod does is it lets you completely skip the Fishing minigame, however, lowers your hook rate substantially substantially and doesn't let you gain any boosted experience from perfect hooks. I recommend picking up the AFK rod if you're only trying to go for encounters and don't care about gaining a lot of fishing experience. There's an argument to be made for and against the AFK rod. If you want efficiency and experience, the AFK rod is not for you, as it's unreasonably slow compared to the Steel Rod and Master Rod. But if you just want to turn your brain off and spam one, the AFK rod is your go-to. Now, fishing is technically classified as a skill, meaning that similar to mining, your ability to do things, in this case use different rods and fish in certain areas, scales based on your level and experience. Fishing, along with mining, make up the only two skills currently currently available in the game. You can check your experience toward your next level by going to your trainer card and viewing the back of it. The Kyogre Altar also doubles the fishing experience yield for everyone in the game for one hour, so I suggest fishing a lot when someone activates the Kyogre Altar. If you want to help reach the 4 million goal to activate the boost, you can donate to the Altar in Vermilion City. It's a simple leveling system. Get enough experience and you gain a level, then you do it all over again. The max level is 100. Here's a spreadsheet of the amount of experience needed to level up for each level while fishing. As your fishing level goes up, so does your fishing encounter speed. The higher level you are, the faster you'll get encounters. Your fishing level also determines the different areas where you can fish. Some areas are locked behind a fishing level requirement that you'll need to hit before you're able to fish there. Some of them are pretty reasonable, while some of them make me... Scratch my head a little bit. With all that being said, let's go over all of the fishing experience milestones. Level 1 is what you'll start at. You can fish in pretty much any basic town or route, but no special locations. I recommend hunting and catching every new fishing encounter that you find just to fill your Pokedex a little bit. Level 5 is where you'll get access to the good rod and can fish a little bit faster and get slightly faster hooks. Level 15 is where you can start fishing in special areas. Your reward for reaching fishing level 15 is that you're now able to fish in the Kano Safari Zone in Fuchsia City. What makes this area special is that you can get both Dratini as an extremely rare, and you can get King's Rock drops from Slowpokes and Poliwags. Once you hit level 20, you're able to start using the Super Rod, which will give you another hook speed boost. You're now also able to fish in Turtle Cove, where you can get Staryu as a very rare, Squirtle as an extremely rare, and you have a chance to get Dragon Scale drops from Horsey. Turtle Cove is easily accessible after getting to Cinnabar Island, talking to Bill, taking a trip to Three Island, and following the path up once you get to Bond Bridge. Then it's a matter of navigating the distant isles, and at the end you'll reach Turtle Cove. At level 25, you're able to start fishing in Cerulean Cave F4. The only two Pokémon that spawn here through fishing are Magikarp and Milotic, so if you want to hunt a Milotic after the Kano Elite 4, I would do it here. You can also get Fossil Shards on this floor, however, these aren't really locked to fishing specifically and can be dropped off of any wild Pokémon here. Also, at level 25, you're able to fish at the Water Labyrinth on Five Island. I don't even think I've ever been to Five Island in Pokémon Planet. There's just nothing to do there. I mean, I guess if you want Murkrow on your team, there's a 100% spawn chance and Lost Cave is a very rare, but I, I'm getting sidetracked. Water Labyrinth has a chance to spawn Feebas, which has a chance to drop a Prism Scale, and can also potentially give you both Dragon Scale and King's Rock drops from Horsey, Slowpoke, and Poliwag, respectively. There's also Quillfish there, and I... I like Quillfish. If I had to recommend one or the other, I would recommend Water Labyrinth, since I personally think you can get better drops there, but if you'd like a fossil Pokémon, Cerulean Cave is a pretty good option. At level 30, you get to start fishing in Toto Cave, which is where you can find Totodile. You can get to Toto Cave by going north of Seanwood City and going through the Lost Meadows heading west across the water and following the path. 
You can also get Staryu here, which is pretty good. Starmie is a really good Illuminate Pokemon and just a good Pokemon in general. Other than that, nothing really notable about Toto Cave. At level 35, you get to fish in the Johto Safari Zone. The Johto Safari Zone can be found by going west from Seanwood City and across routes 47 and 48. It's 80,000 for a 24-hour ticket, so I would only fish in this area if you're planning to play for a long time that day. There's a few different areas that you can fish in here, but personally, if you're planning to fish here, I would generally fish in the wetlands. You can find Milotic as an extremely rare here, along with Poliwag and Poliwhirl for King's Rock Drops. Also, Corfish is here, and he's just... he's just great. No, I'm being serious, Crawdon is really good. At level 40, you can fish in the Dragon's Den in Blackthorn City. Most people already know where this is, it's just the cave behind the gym. There are only three spawns here, Gyarados, Seedra, and Dratini. The Gyarados here are really good for attack EV training. Seedra can drop Dragon Scales and Dratini as well. Dratini. Now, okay, after level 40, we enter something I like to call... The slog. So basically, the slog starts at level 40 and ends at level 70. This period makes fishing a living hell. Okay, let me explain this and put you through a scenario. So, at level 40 you get to fish in the dragon's den. That's pretty cool. Dratini's cool. Then you hit level 45 fishing and you can fish in Altering Cave. It's pretty nice to be able to fish in there for certain ERs and the drops are insanely overpowered. But you're probably not willing to spend 600k a day to get in there since while you kill Pokemon you don't profit anything other than drops. So you decide to head back to Dragon's Den to push through the next five levels. Once you hit level 50, you can fish in the Hoenn Safari Zone. Surfboards are pretty much a must-have item, and Miracle Berries are a nice bonus, but these aren't exclusive to fishing and can drop anywhere in the Safari Zone. Frillish and Mudkip are pretty good too. There's a lot of ups to fishing in the Hoenn Safari Zone, and you can probably make a ton of money if you get lucky with Surfboard or Miracle Berry drops and start selling them off. But again, you're not willing to use 400k a day just to get in there. I mean, I guess with the Safari Zone, you can actually technically earn money while you're in there as opposed to Altering Cave where you don't earn anything, so it's pretty good once in a while. But for the most part, if you don't have the money or aren't planning to play for a good while to get your money's worth out of the Safari Zone, you go back to Dragon's Den to get through the next five levels. But you can go craft a Steel Rod or get the AFK Rod, so you're not complaining. At least you can skip the minigame and mindlessly grind if you want to. Once you hit level 55, it depends. Depends on where you're at. I was lucky enough at this point in the game to already have my Ancient Key, so I got to go ahead and start fishing in Ancient Cave R2. This was a pretty nice experience boost after spending 15 levels at Dragon's Den. Some other players might not be so lucky though, and they might have to stick with staying in Dragon's Den. Besides, honestly, the spawns in Ancient Cave aren't that good. Seismitoad and Jellicent are pretty good, and that's kinda it. Milotic is just kinda meh. Other than that, you can get Skull Fossil Shard Drops for Kranidos, and Poliwhirl can still drop King's Rocks. If you have the Ancient Key, go ahead and head to Ancient Cave R2 to get a sizable boost in your experience gain. You've definitely earned it. For this example though, let's say you don't have the Ancient Key because you're not a PvP player and got unlucky with drops in Altering Cave and don't have the loop half. Back to Dragon's Den. At level 60, you get the ability to fish in the Sinnoh Safari Zone. Now you're starting to get pissed off. 400k a ticket again just to get an experience boost. Surfboard drops are nice and there are some new exclusive Pokemon like Skrelp, Binacle, Inkay, and Piplup, so it's really good for your Pokedex. Other than that, eh. Fishing in the Sinnoh Safari Zone isn't really all that good since you can literally get better Pokemon while land grinding like Ferrisseed, Chimchar, and Solosis. Okay, hi, this is Future Andrew. I just looked at the spawns again. They're actually not too bad. Quillfish, Alomomola, Corfish, and Staryu are all pretty good Pokemon. I still stand by my point that you can get far better Pokemon through land grinding, though. I guess you can get easy access to any chest that spawns there, and there's a rainbow gem there, but it's still... Eh. Then finally, at level 70 fishing, you finally get the ability to fish in the battle zone. So if you don't get the ancient key, that's a whole 30 levels you have to spend fishing in Dragon's Den. What the f***? 
Even when you do get the ancient key, the grind is still fairly slow and is mostly brute force grinding. Which, to be fair, this game is an MMO and it's supposed to be super grindy, so I guess they nailed it there. However, the level gap can easily be counteracted by a few things that I'll talk about in a little bit. Battle zone fishing is okay. Pretty good guaranteed rares, VRs, and ERs. Core fish and Aloma Mola are good for PvP. Star use pretty good for all around grinding, and you can sell off your excess Dratinis. No special drops though, which sucks. You'll surely enjoy the experience boost though, and will probably make it through the next five levels in a few days if you really grind at it. At level 75 fishing, you get to fish in Mossy Cave, which weirdly enough feels like an awkward backpedal to me. Like, I don't know, the Pokemon in Mossy Cave are lower level than the Pokemon in the battle zone? Something just doesn't sit right with me. Anyways, Mossy Cave fishing is pretty good. Staryu's always good and Dratini and Milotic are the ERs there. You can also get Fossil Shard drops here too, which is nice, and let's not forget about the Shed Shell! Everyone's favorite item. The grind here should hopefully go pretty fast if you brute force it. Then finally, at level 80 fishing, you get to the good sh you get the ability to fish an ancient dungeon. While yes, ancient dungeon spawns are nothing to write home about, Shelder, Star Yu, Dratini, they're still pretty good. We're more focused on the drops, the money, and the experience. Fishing is by far the easiest way to grind an ancient dungeon since there isn't a lot of Pokemon variety and you can just sit there with an AFK rod and grind away. The drop rate in the dungeon has been increased by a whole 200%, meaning that while the rarity of your drops might not increase, the frequency of drops is definitely higher. Ancient Dungeon can drop stuff like the Soothe Bell, Wise Glasses, Muscle Band, and most importantly, Legendary Bait. Money is increased by 100%, meaning that you'll be getting a consistent profit of around 450 to 600 per kill, and the experience is nuts. Granted, yes, okay, you do have to build an entire team to grind here, and getting a Deoxys is no small feat. But that's where the other area comes in. You also get the ability to fish in the Water Temple. This is where you can get Manaphy, which is an amazing legendary Pokemon, which by the way, hooking a legendary gives you a total of around 90,000 fishing experience points. Of course, our old friends Staryu, Horsey, and Dratini are also here. Unlike with Ancient Dungeon, you don't need an entire team centered around grinding here, giving you a lot more freedom. Usually just use Alakazam or Slacking here though if you're super hard set on effectively grinding here. After you hit level 80, that's kinda it. Just sit back and either Steel Rod or AFK Rod grind until you hit level 100. You can get the Master Rod after you hit level 100 if you're trying to go for top 100 fishing experience or just want to get encounters at hypersonic speeds. Now that we've covered all the level milestones, let's go over some tips to help your grind go a little easier. I've got three main tips to give you. Number one, grind in the highest level area you can as often as you can. Are you level 25 fishing? Fish in the Water Labyrinth to get the most experience. Level 50, the Hoenn Safari Zone is your best bet if you have the money to spare. Just grind in the areas that give you the most experience, which are usually the areas that are locked behind the level milestones. Pretty simple and self-explanatory. Two, take advantage of perfect hooks and Kyogre blessings. Want more experience? Try to perfect hook everything. This is why I would not recommend using the AFK rod if you're trying to get as much experience as possible because A, it's slow, and B, no perfect hooks. Take advantage of any active Kyogre blessings as well. If someone pops it and you're up for a bit of fishing, go fish for that whole hour. You'll get a pretty decent amount of experience. Again, this tip is fairly simple and self-explanatory. Number three, events, events, events. Now, this might seem a little crazy, but fishing in some events actually isn't that bad of an idea if you're super dead set on leveling fishing. Especially during the summer event where you can encounter Volcanion through fishing. Fishing during events is actually a pretty good way to boost your experience since the global experience is boosted by 1.5 times for fishing, mining, and regular experience. As an added bonus because it's an event, more players are likely going to be spreading honey and popping Kyogre blessings more often. So that means rarer Pokemon and more experience from those rarer Pokemon. And that's pretty much all you need to know about fishing. Fishing can be fun during the early game, tedious during the mid game, and extremely rewarding during the end game. There's not a ton of depth to this skill. It's sort of just, well, fishing. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and good luck on all of your future fishing encounters because you know what? There's nothing like a bit of fish.